What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I wanted to break down and share with you guys three stocks that I'm personally watching and looking to swing trade here in the month of September in 2019. I want to break down entry points, exit points, risk reward involved with the stock in terms of how much could you potentially make percentage wise, how much could you lose percentage wise, and kind of just the brief technicals that I'm watching with these stocks moving moving averages, support and resistance levels, the whole nine yards, right? And the whole idea of this video is for you to be able to take the tricks, take the tips that I'm sharing in this video in terms of technical analysis and apply it to your own analysis, to your own stocks and ETFs, whatever you guys trade. So I also want to look at the markets very briefly, the S&P um, in specific to see where we're trading right now so we can get an idea of the overall trajectory of the market because that's important in my my opinion when it comes to swing trading so if you enjoy this video if you find value in this video feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market investing and trading this is the channel for you so join the crew guys so let's start this video off by looking at the SPX the S&P 500 index so off of a quick glance here it's very obvious that the S&P is trading in a channel right now between 2950 and around 29.90, right? That's the channel we're trading in right now, about a 40-point window. And if we zoom in a bit to the five-day, five-minute chart here, you can see that this 29.90 level is extremely prominent. It's very, very... It's been very difficult for us to break out of this level over the past three trading days. Just take a look, guys. On the 5th of September, we gapped up to 29.85, and then we sold off there, failing to break out, right? The next day, we tried to retest 29.85, 29.90, twice and we failed to break out a second time right and today guys we gapped up 29.90 we got rejected we tried to come back and retest it got rejected again and now we're dumping pretty aggressively heading into the latter half of the market today on the 9th of September in 2019 so this action right here this price action and especially since it looks like we are getting rejected again the start of a rejection under this 180s may on the five day five minute chart as a resistance you know this price action is leading me to believe that we might be selling off here to potentially retest 29.50 again as a new support and if we just look at the RSI very briefly it confirms that we might be selling off here in the short term because it's extremely overbought at the 67 level and remember anything above 70 anything close to 70 is becoming very overbought whether it's a future index stock ETF whatever it may be right so that's just the brief breakdown right now you know we are a bit overbought we may be sell set setting up right now for a sell off and hey if we sell off to 29.50, we confirm that level as a support and we continue to uptrend from there. That's going to be very good um, for the overall markets in terms of a bullish perspective, right? But let's say we break 29.50, we start to sell off. Hey, we may be retesting the 180 SMA again at 29.30, maybe down to 2,900, which would put us on top of that 50 SMA. And that's not going to be too good for the bullish aspect, for the bullish people out there. That would be better for the bearish people, right? The bearish sentiment out there if we were to break and start to continue to break below moving average after moving average after support after support, right? So now that we talked about that, let's get into the three stocks that I'm personally personally watching right the first one is BAC Bank of America and this is one that we've talked about a lot on this channel and I'm loving the price action that I'm seeing right now on BAC so the overall breakdown we can see here that it's trading in a channel very similar to the SPX but on a larger time frame kind of drawn out here right the SPX it's very small the channel is trading in but BAC it's stretched across a six month time period and that channel is between $26.50 roughly and around $30 right take a look we've hit the support at $26.50 once 
twice, three times, four times. This is this is the double bottom that first and initially caught my uh, attention for BAC, and then the breakout above the 50 SMA was a confirming point that it was breaking out to potentially retest the resistance right at the top of this channel, which is at about thirty dollars, and this is a very very prominent resistance because we got hit there once. In, in January of 2019, again in February, again in March, again in May, right, again in July, this is just a level that we've gotten rejected at multiple times in the past. So now we're seeing the double bottom, which is a very good bullish sign, the breakout above the 50 SMA. This is actually where I entered BAC about two weeks ago, and I actually took an initial loss because at that time period, the markets were turning red. BAC broke a technical spot that I was looking at on the five day, five minutes. So my plan called for me to cut losses at that point, And I did right. But in hindsight, now, if I didn't cut losses, I'd be up like three, four, five, maybe even six, not probably not 6%, more like three, 4% on my position, but that's okay, right? I took the little loss, but you can't really predict the future 100%, which is why in that moment, right? It's better to, to just take the loss, cut your losses, and look for a re-entry, which is what I'm doing right now, right? And BAC, now that we've broken above that 50 SMA, we've pulled down, we've held it as a support, we've broken out of the 2765 level of resistance from the 30th of August, and we've actually pulled down and retested that resistance as a new support, and we've broken out of the 180 SMA. These are signs that are very, very bullish, right? Just take a look at this, guys. This is a textbook pattern right here on the 20 day one hour take a look we broke out of the moving averages we pulled down held them as supports we broke out of the previous resistance on the 30th we literally pulled down we held that old resistance as a new support as well as that 50 sma and we gapped up today breaking that previous resistance higher high right 2870 now is where i'm going to be looking for an entry point on bac now i want to potentially get a pullback here and a retest at 2820 so right now that's my entry point target on bac 2820 that'll bring the r side down a bit to a to a healthier point that'll bring us down to 2820 right and from there we may be trending under this 180 sma or at that point actually we may be pulling down to retest this 180 sma on the four hour chart as a support right that's very key because if we break below it and start to get back down to the high 27s that's not going to be too attractive at least on the short term here we ideally want to see it hold this level retest it and then slowly start to climb up so initially here my exit point is going to be anywhere between 2960 and 30 dollars per share 2960 if we start to get up to this level here upwards to 2950 2960 i may start shaving off my profits there with an ultimate sell target at 30 dollars so from 2820 upwards to 2960 that's about a 5% profit margin upwards to $30 that's close to a 6 percent right and if we want to cut losses here we also have to have a strategy for that where are we going two percent three percent are we going to have a mental stop loss on it what are we doing me personally i'm going to have a two percent stop loss on this one maybe even a 1.5 percent and if we get in at 2820 like the goal entry point here this is going to be set probably at around 2770 to around 2775 and if my math is correct that should be roughly a 1.5 to 2 percent stop loss and it is right it's roughly a two percent and i'd probably set it at around 2775 to give it some wiggle room right because if you think about it overall if we did pull down to 2790 let's say for example overall we're still trending up because extending this trend line shows you exactly that right if we pull down say that we did one of these 
isn't that technically a higher low from the previous? So at this point, we could end up pulling back and popping. So I kind of want to have my stop loss a bit below this level to give it some wiggle room if we were to pull down here, right? This is hypothetical, right? So these are some things that are going through my mind right now, probably maybe even a bit lower than 2760 stop loss, just in case it does pull down even lower to retest to potentially pop right it's it's sometimes all about giving it some wiggle room but i'm sure you guys understand what i mean by that and where i'm going with it so bac i'm liking it right now i just need to see a bit of a pullback here and a retest either at 2820 maybe we break 2820 and then we may be going down to 2783 and this is another entry point right and from there i'd probably set my stop loss two percent 1.5 percent below that which would probably put it right above that 50 SMA. So that's kind of what's going through my head right now. Entry points, exit points, um, supports, resistances that I'm looking at for BAC. So the second one I want to talk about is a bit easier to break down, and that is Visa, guys. So Visa... It broke down here today from 187 all the way down to 180. And why am I saying it's a bit easier? Because overall, the trend on Visa right now, unlike BAC, which is a horizontal trend, this is a different type of pattern, Visa is an uptrend. It's a straight-up uptrend pattern over the past six months on this 184 hour chart and 180 means 180 days which is six months right which is why i call it the six month chart we hit a low at 120 now we just hit a high at 187 literally the whole time we've been riding the moving averages the 180 sma the 50 sma we've had the bullish cross of the 50 sma above the 180 sma and it seems like every time we've retraced in the stock every time we've pulled down we've held either the 180 sma or the 50 SMA as a support. And what do you notice here, guys? This is opening up a crazy entry point if we do end up holding these moving averages, which historically, again, we've held them over the past six months. We've dropped from 187 down to 180. And 180 here does seem like it's breaking a bit below this one or uh, this 50 SMA here on this four hour chart, which is not too good of a sign because ideally here we would want to see it hold this, but I still need to give it some time into tomorrow, most likely to see what it ends up opening at. Ideally, if it gapped up tomorrow, that would be a point to enter. But now that we are breaking the 50 SMA, we may be going down to test this 180 SMA. And if we were to break that to the downside, at least in the short term right that's not going to be too attractive ideally i would want to see a hold above both of these another thing i want to point out here is that i'm noticing a bullish cross the 50 sma crossed above the 180 sma on the 29th to the 30th of august and since then guys just take a look at these these crossovers they're very important right since then visa went from 177 up to 187 so if you played this as a moving average play moving average crossover play you would have made some pretty good money right now that we are still trending above in terms of the 50 sma above the 180 sma that's still giving me bullish sentiment in this stock overall just judging on these moving averages and, and i don't know if i mentioned this uh, a minute ago because sometimes I forget what I say 30 seconds ago when I'm recording these videos, but the RSI is actually oversold right now. It's dumped down a bit to 39, so this is just opening up an opportunity, right? The whole entire idea, guys, of swing trading, day trading, whatever kind of trading you're into is not to force the opportunities. Don't just pick a stock on your watch list. Don't just drag over Walmart, whatever it may be, and just buy it wherever it's at just because you're impulsive and you want to trade, right? The whole entire idea is to wait for those openings right literally wait for the opportunity and then pounce on it so visa right now this is one that if you were patient a couple of days ago this is the opportunity that you're like okay here's my window i should pounce at it i should get into this before the window closes and oops there goes the mic 
And then that would end up being good if it all ends up playing out, right? And by the way, guys, don't just buy these because I'm saying these um, on the video. Don't just trade them because I'm trading them most likely in this next coming week. Um, do your own research, guys. It's very, very important. But overall, um, you know, back to that opportunity thing. Just hop in when you're seeing opportunities. Don't force anything because that's how you lose money, guys. When you're forcing stocks, forcing ETFs, buying them at, at, at random times or times when there's not much value there, that's just bad, right? But for me right now, Visa's looking good. Um, ideally, if we just break it down on a smaller uh, time frame chart here, ideally an entry point would be if we held this 180 SMA support on this hourly chart, an entry point I'm looking at would probably be initially if you want to jump the gun a bit here on Visa. Let me just zoom in on this uh, um, um, or just rather draw a tool here for you guys. Ideally, it would be if we broke 181, right? Notice how 181 was a resistance back towards the middle towards the end of August right around here. And it was also resistance towards the end of August on the 30th of August as well, right? And we broke out of that hitting the high at 187. Now we pull down. We actually broke that 181 support and and now it's a resistance again. So ideally, if we pop and break 181, that's going to be a confirmation that we're popping on the 180 SMA support as well. This could be an initial entry point um, that I'm looking at. So 181, 181, I'd initially add money. And then the next point in time that I would add money would be um, 182.50, right? That's the next resistance I'm seeing here. And my philosophy of swing trading, guys, and you can look this up on YouTube. You can type in Stasser Fest, um, swing trading, how to conserve capital. My philosophy is scaling into positions, right? Scaling into positions with 10, 20% of my goal position at first. So this way I can mitigate my risk because let's say I scaled in with 20% here and then Visa tanked. I'm only losing money on that 20% uh, uh, stake, right? But let's say we popped up, I put 100% in, whatever that value, dollar value may be, and then it tanked, I'm losing a lot more money, right? You guys get what I'm saying here? Larger value up front, you're going to lose more money if it drops, um, and, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, compared to if you only put a smaller amount at first, right? So that's the idea here. Visa entry point, 181.20, 182.50 exit, probably around the resistance at around 186, 187, giving it a rough profit margin potential of, let's see, my guess is going to be around 3, 4%. Let's see how good my eye is at um, predicting or rather guessing this. And it is 3%, right? 3% up to that resistance. And of course, if we just continue the uptrend, if we continue hitting those highs, it could be even more than that. So Visa, I'm liking that one a lot here, guys. And on to the third one, which is at V, ticker symbol ATVI, which is actually, in my opinion, one of the trickier ones, uh, probably the trickiest ones out of these three, because as of now, at V is in the middle of this channel that is trading in between $52 and around $56, kind of putting it in a weird spot, right? We're in the middle of this channel, so there's a lot of downside, but there's also potential for it to pop up. The RSI is also overbought here. It's at about $66. Um, we are seeing a pretty nice pattern on this RSI. Uh, we are seeing higher lows, higher highs on the RSI, which is pretty good, which means this could be tuning up for a pop to break above 56. You know, that is possible here. But personally, guys, I would love to see an entry point I don't know if we'll get this because it's asking for a lot, but an entry point down at $52. We probably won't get it, guys, because it's already up 5% from there. But ideally, an entry point at 52 would be beautiful, right? That would put us on top of this 180 SMA or even 53 bucks, right? Anything, you know, 53.50, that would be nice because that would be putting us more towards the support of this channel. And from there, if it continues this breakout that it's currently on, on, we could end up filling up to 56 easily like we did a couple of days ago, giving us, you know, from 53 up to 56, roughly a 6% margin of profit. That's awesome, right? And overall, guys, video game stocks, I've mentioned this a bunch, AtV included, they've been getting crushed, right? AtV's gone from 85 down to 40. We got a couple bottoms there on that support at 40, and then we've started to climb out of resistance after resistance since then, really reversing the trend 
trend here, which is why I'm looking at it as a longer term swing trade here, right? I'm just loving it. You know, overall, We've broken out of moving average resistances. We broke out of the 47 resistance. We filled up all the way to the $52 resistance. We pretty much filled all the way up to 56, and now we're pulling back. So, again, guys, ideally 53 would be a good entry point. I don't know if we'll, if we'll get it, but if we break 56, you know, 56 can also be a good entry point to potentially fill the gap back up to $62, which is a huge move of around 10, 11%. But again, I like 53. I, I would like to get in here and from 53 up to 56, that's about a 6% margin of profit. You have a 2% stop loss on that. That's pretty good, right? That's where I'd personally put my stop loss and I'll show you guys even more on this 20 day, one hour chart. And this is actually important to point out as well. On this hourly chart, we are seeing a hold on this 50 SMA. So if we actually pop above this 50 SMA, this is a clear sign that we're going straight to 56, and this could be even an intraday play opportunity before the swing trade, which in my opinion, I would get in if it were to pop here, break 56. I'd wait for a pullback and a retest on 56 before getting in and potentially ride it back up to those 60s. So that's what I'm looking at here on at V guys. I'm really liking it overall, just being patient and waiting for that opportunity to open up to me. So those are the three stocks. If you enjoy this video, if you found value in this video, let me know down below in the comments what you think about it. Hit that like button to support the channel and consider subscribing if you want to see further um, stock breakdowns, further content on the stock market in general, news, trading, investing, tips, my journey, what I'm doing in the markets. Um, this this is the channel for you guys. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate you all watching. Peace out.